Ukraine peace talks were held. A lost spacecraft was found. And in Melbourne yesterday... We just lost the World Cup by a millimeter. (laughs) That's tough. A dramatic exit for the U.S. women's soccer team. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Monday, August 7th. Let's get you caught up with today's 7 Stories. Number one. Ukraine peace talks were held in Saudi Arabia this weekend. Officials from more than 40 countries, including China, attended. It was seen as a push by Ukraine to grow partnerships beyond its Western supporters. Russia was not invited to the talks. A Ukrainian official said the meeting was very productive. It focused on economic and security support with other European countries. It also looked at finding ways to continue exporting grains from Ukraine after Russia withdrew from the Black Sea grain deal. Number two, the U.S. was eliminated from the Women's World Cup yesterday. The team lost to Sweden 5-4 to four in a dramatic penalty shootout after a scoreless draw in the round of 16. It was the team's earliest World Cup exit ever. Scoring was a problem throughout the tournament. After three goals in its opener against Vietnam, the U.S. managed just one goal in its next three games. Number three. Unprecedented glacial flooding swept away two homes in Alaska's capital. Water from a basin above the 3,000-year-old Mendenhall Glacier has flooded the city of Juneau every year since 2011. But this weekend's violent flooding smashed previous records. The water damaged dozens of homes, but no injuries were reported. Scientists are studying the glacial floods, which are now expected to happen every year but it's impossible to predict how severe the flooding will be with enough time to prepare the city. Number four. The FDA approved the first treatment for postpartum depression on Friday. Around one in seven women experience postpartum depression following childbirth. A new drug called Zoranolone is taken once daily for 14 days to treat the condition. It's fast-acting, unlike other antidepressants, which can take weeks or months to take effect. Health officials hope it will dramatically expand treatment for the debilitating and sometimes deadly condition. But researchers caution that there's no magic pill for postpartum depression, which is also affected by social conditions. Number five. The U.S. is experiencing a bump in coronavirus transmissions. The CDC recorded 8,000 COVID-19 hospital admissions in the week ending on July 22nd. That's a 12% increase from the week before, but it's still far below levels from last July, and it's not yet causing alarm among public health officials. But this is the first bump in cases since the public health emergency ended in May. Fluctuations in COVID activity are expected during the summer as people go on vacation and attend big gatherings like weddings and conferences. The uptick exposes the challenges of avoiding the virus without having free testing widely available. Number six, scientists have achieved nuclear fusion for the second time. A lab in California has repeated its groundbreaking achievement, a fusion reaction that produced more energy than was put into it. The first time was back in December, and it got international attention. But this time, the scientists produced an even higher energy yield. The merging of atoms could someday be a source of abundant clean energy. And unlike the energy produced by splitting atoms, fusion doesn't use uranium, create radioactive byproducts, or risk meltdowns. But scientists say the quest for an unlimited source of cheap and clean power could take decades more work. And at number seven, NASA regained contact with the lost Voyager 2 spacecraft. In July, a mistaken command accidentally instructed the unmanned spacecraft to shift its antenna two degrees away from Earth. But after two weeks of silence, NASA engineers at its Deep Space Network facility in Australia sent the lost craft an interstellar shout. That's a command beamed billions of miles into space. And it worked. The Voyager 2 received new instructions to orient itself back toward Earth. Voyager 2 left Earth nearly 46 years ago. It's the only spacecraft that's flown past Neptune and Uranus. 
And now it's once again able to transmit scientific data back to Earth from its long journey into space. And just like that, you are all caught up. If you're obsessed with games from the post, like On the Record and Keyword, you should sign up for Game Break. It's a new newsletter that takes you inside how our games are made and shows you how your scores stack up. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I will meet you back here tomorrow. Thank you.